Hello, my name is Dr. Phil Boyle, and I wish to introduce you to restorative reproductive medicine and make some comparisons with in vitro fertilization. I've been providing restorative fertility treatment in Ireland since 1998, and my practice is responsible for over 3000 live births over the last 25 years. I am a recognized expert in this field of medicine, and I'm currently president of the International Institute for Restorative Reproductive Medicine. With regard to IVF, by comparison, it is a more expensive treatment with a surprisingly low live birth rate of only 24% on average, a higher incidence of premature babies and low birth weight. We obtained this data from the registry for IVF in the United Kingdom, the Human Fertilization and Embryology Authority, and are going to compare their data from 2019 with our own practice data. They made this data available in 2021 and it's available through their website. If we look at everybody female aged under 42 years and younger, there was a 30, 32,000 people in that group resulting in 7,920 live births. That translates into 24.4% live birth rate. If we look at it, that same data represented in a graph, the green represents the number of cycles started, the blue represents pregnancies and yellow live births. Here's how the data works out. The average female age was just under aged 35. And uh, for female age from 35 up to 44, you can see the percentage live birth rate for these different age groups. The average in total comes out at 24.4% for those aged 42 and younger. People are often surprised at this and they say, I thought when I looked at the data for IVF success rates, it's much higher. Uh, this is only one out of every four, so three out of every four, it doesn't work. And in round numbers, this is where the numbers get a little bit confusing. I gave you the numbers of live births obtained uh, depending on how many cycles were started. Often what fertility clinics will quote is different to that. And they would quote, they would exclude a significant number from the calculations and they look at clinical pregnancies per embryo transfer. And it gives an apparent much higher success rate, apparently one in three, rather than the true number of one in four. So it's worth bearing that in mind. We obtained our data with the help of Professor Joe Stanford from the University of Utah, who's developed a, a registry system called STORM, and this is surveillance of treatment outcomes from restorative reproductive medicine. So we used his uh, data collection system to obtain our data. When we recorded our data and compared it for the different age groups, our data comes out in the orange bars and the IVF data is in blue. And our, our average live birth rate came out at 40% for everybody we treated in 2019, compared to 24% for the HFEA average for IVF. So I'm sure you'd agree there's a significant difference between these numbers. This is the details of our data. We treated 193 couples in 2019, 78 of those had a live birth. That gives a crude live birth rate of 40.4%. More importantly, we didn't have any premature births. No, no baby was delivered before 35 weeks. Our average birth weight was seven pounds, 10 ounces, or if you're into grams, three, four, six, six grams. We only had two twin pregnancies, giving a twin pregnancy rate of 2.5%. And it's 6.5% for in vitro fertilization. If there's more twins, there's more problems and more risks. So you want to keep that number as low as possible. Our uh, patient population was a year and a half older than the IVF population we looked at. So that's an added thing that should cause us to get a lower success rate. And also nearly 20% of our couples had previously tried and failed in vitro fertilization. There was 80 failed IVF cycles between them, an average of 2.3 attempts per couple who tried IVF before. So this was our practice group of uh, those presenting with uh, subfertility and it is uh, comparable to the IVF group, and if anything, a little bit more difficult because of uh, the advanced female age, which is the single biggest predictor to anticipate likelihood of success. So we've got a higher success rate, less than half the cost uh, per couple. And along the way, with the techniques that we use, maternal and fetal health improves. 
and this lower incidence of low birth weight and premature babies further reduces uh, financial burdens on the state and on couples. If we compare 100 couples choosing in vitro fertilization compared to 100 choosing restorative reproductive medicine, uh, IVF will give us 24 live births, restorative reproductive medicine that we apply will give us 40 live births per 100 couples. Um, so the cost for 100 people to be treated is 500,000 euro for in vitro fertilization, and it's only 200,000 euro uh, because it's 2,000 euro uh, per treatment cycle for restorative reproductive medicine. So the cost per baby born uh, for IVF is 20,000 euro compared to just 5,000 euro per baby born for restorative reproductive medicine. So that's a significant difference between the two, uh, literally four times the price per baby born with in vitro fertilization. If you have a 1 million euro budget and you apply that million euro budget for in vitro fertilization, you would expect to get 48 live births, whereas you would get 200 live births with restorative reproductive medicine. So our point is there are significant cost savings to the state uh, if the state would choose to fund restorative reproductive medicine as it's currently funding in vitro fertilization. Uh, the current spend, I believe, in Ireland is 30 million euro. Uh, that will allow the state to treat 6,000 couples with in vitro fertilization, giving 1,440 live births. Whereas if that same funding was applied for restorative fertility treatment, you would be able to treat 15,000 couples and expect to obtain 6,000 live births. 9,000 more couples getting access to treatment and 4,500 uh, more babies for the same budget. So our approach to fertility is simple. If you have a fertility problem, there always has to be a reason. And we identify and treat the underlying reasons. We restore reproductive health and restore fertility. Um, our goal is all about addressing the root cause of the fertility issues to restore balance to the cycle and allow couples to conceive naturally. The key to the entire process is a specialized fertility charting app and specialized medical treatment, which isn't widely applied generally. With our app at chartneo.com, it's intuitive how to observe, document and record your fertility cycle. You build up a profile of your biological markers of fertility bleeding pattern, mucus pattern, temperature rise, and then we measure hormones with respect to that. But we can identify subtle hormone deficiencies with this approach that are simply not identified otherwise. We've got three phases to treatment. It takes two cycles for phase one, uh, one cycle for phase two, so a three cycle lead in time. And once we're in phase three, then it can take anywhere from one to 12 treated cycles before pregnancy may follow. You could be lucky and get pregnant in as quick as four cycles or could take up to 18 cycles if we encounter challenges along the way. So rather than a quick fix, such as in vitro fertilization, this is a sustained process over time. And because we can get a higher success rate at a lower cost with improved health, we think that more people should have access to this treatment strategy. Uh, the problem is government funding has created an uneven playing field. It's cheaper for couples to choose in vitro fertilization rather than pursue restorative fertility treatment through our practice. This um, uneven playing field uh, by government policy threatens our very existence and financially we may not be able to continue to practice. And rightly, many of our patients who value our treatment are agitated by this. So. Uh, our ask is simple. We ask that the Department of Health will provide funding for our clinics, similar to what they do for in vitro fertilization. And we're more than happy to compare full outcomes in a transparent and comprehensive manner to definitively see uh, how well restorative reproductive medicine compares with in vitro fertilization. Thank you for your time.